Hi, I'm Tam with the Scope with your solar storm forecast for the week of June 10th. The sun's activity has really picked up this week. We've had multiple regions rotating around from the east limb. None of them have brought us any M flares, but we do have a new M flare contender, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Meanwhile, we've been getting some storming from this uh, coronal hole. Some fast wind has hit us, and it's still causing some issues for us. Uh, we have another coronal hole that will be sending us some new fast wind in a couple days. We also have a couple solar storms that have been launched from this region. One of them is Earth directed. And if you look right here, right around the back side, we are now seeing the part of a new M flare contender and we should get a better look at it in the next couple days. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we've actually been below the seafloor for quite some time, but activity is beginning to pick up. We've actually reached almost at the M flare threat level over the past couple days, and with this new region rotating around, I bet you this activity will continue. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see we've actually enjoyed an extended period of quiet until about June 8th when we got hit by a transient disturbance ahead of some fast solar wind and it brought us a brief but moderate uh, geomagnetic storm. And that caused some gorgeous aurora over Canada and United States as well as Tasmania and New Zealand. And we're still feeling the effects of that high speed stream. Uh, the amateur radio bands are still kind of recovering. Now, it's been so long since we've had some really good aurora that I just absolutely got flooded with pictures. So here's some gorgeous aurora in Saskatchewan and a fisherman in Whistler. We had some noctilucent clouds with aurora in Alberta and some haunting aurora in Edmonton. We had gorgeous aurora in the United States. Here's central South Dakota. We had some lightning along with aurora in Wisconsin. Some gorgeous aurora with air glow at Highwood Lake in Washington. It came far down south as Wyoming and in Colorado. Now down under, we had a beautiful red aurora in Tasmania and some goldenrod aurora in New Zealand and Omoro and in Dunedin. Not only were the humans enjoying the aurora, but this photographer made a friend. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Enlil. It's our prediction model. This is NASA's version of the model. And you can see there's been a solar storm that's been launched that's kind of Earth-directed. It looks like it's going to go east of us, but it might possibly graze us on the 12th. If we flip up to the impact footprint, you can see here's Earth here, and it is just barely grazing us. So we could see some effects starting around the 12th to the 13th. Returning to the disk, you can see we actually have quite a few regions in Earth view this week, so NOAA is keeping our M-flare risk elevated. Now, region 2360, which is the largest of them, is now moving off to the west limb, and it should rotate out of sight probably by the end of the week. Meanwhile, we have that new M-flare contender that we can't see yet rotating onto the southeast limb, and that should be visible here in the next few days. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still feeling the effects of that high speed stream. So NOAA's giving us a chance for some minor storming at high latitudes, not so much at mid latitudes, but when the 12th hits, that grazing solar storm passage comes, we ha do have a chance for some storming at high latitudes, maybe even some major storming. At mid latitudes, don't expect nearly so much, but it's still a good chance for aurora possibilities. And then as we push into the end of the week, we might start feeling some effects from the new fast wind that's coming from that second coronal hole that we saw and that could continue the storming in through the weekend. So we do have some good chance for aurora but most likely amateur radio bands might be a little bit messed up this week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, so NOAA is keeping our M-flare threat risk uh, elevated at about 15%, with regions 2360 and 62 being the main contenders. Of course, region 2365 looks like it might actually be uh, upping its activity level, and we have that new contender uh, that's on the east limb that has yet to rotate into view, and that may actually up our flare risk as we get towards the end of the week. But none of these regions are a strong threat for radiation storms at the moment, so everything's still in the green. So this week looks like it's going to be a buzz of activity. We are still feeling the lingering effects from the high speed stream. On the 12th and the 13th, we are expecting a glancing blow from that Earth-directed solar storm. And then right after that, we're going to start feeling the effects of yet another high-speed stream. So pretty much all week, we've got something happening. And this could bring us uh, some more aurora, as well as disruptions on the amateur radio bands and possibly even GPS, maybe at high latitudes, pretty much for the entire week.
Now on top of that, we have that new M-Flare contender that hasn't even rotated into view yet. It's given us a couple what we call occulted uh, high C-class flares, which means that when it finally comes into real view, we might actually see something that pops up above that M-Flare threat level. And that could bring us more disruptions for uh, you amateur radio and you GPS users. So we'll be watching that very closely. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.